I'm going to begin with a very philosophical question uh, for you. How many of you have a favorite hand? Just wave that at me. Your, your, your wave. Uh, a lot of right hands are going up. Philosophical question. If you lost your right hand, what would be... No, no, no. What is it? Yeah. Sorry. Um, if you lost your left hand, my philosophical question for you is, what hand would be left? Come on, somebody think about it. Give me some organ or something. Ever hear that? Uh, that? That wasn't preachy. It was for, I mean, if you lost your left hand, what hand would be left? Mm. No, if you lost your right hand, would, you, would, you, would it be all right? Uh, would you be all right? No? You lost. Or if you lost your left hand, you'd be all right. The other day I went to the tax office. Someone said, tax office. If you're watching in America, that's like the DMV. All right? It's this place where you have a lot of lines and a lot of long lines. And it's crazy. And in Jamaica, you may spend a long time at the tax office. Right? Unless you know what you're doing, though. Unless you know what you're doing, unless you have everything straight. And even if you do that, even if you're smart, you can still spend all day. And it's, it's really tedious and it's crazy. You have to carry something to do if you're going there. And something to eat. So the other day I went to the tax office. And I went to the guy at the front, you know, and I went and cause, cause, cause what they said was, come to the desk, tell them what you're doing, and then they'll kind of send you in the, in the, in the right direction, kind of, right? So I said, okay, uh, Mr. Morgan, what you need to do is go downstairs. Now, when you go downstairs, downstairs busy, Mr. Morgan. So when you go down there, the man looked at me in my eye, you know. And he said, when you go down there, make sure you go in the right line. Make sure you go in the right line, you know. So what did I do? I go downstairs. And I go in the right line. Because, listen, because you only have to tell me one time. <laughs> you only have to tell me once. After, after me, an idiot. The man said, right line. Somebody said, four hours later. <laughs> my number call, I go up to the front. Hi, ma'am. You know, you know, so glad to finally get here. I give her my number. She said, sir, you are in the wrong line. I said, no, 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 no. I said, um, did you know I'm a pastor? <laughs> I um, graduated from a reputable um, university. I, did, I studied. And the guy, upstairs, the guy upstairs told me to go in the right line. This is the right line. Uh, this is the right line. She said, she said sir, this, 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 is, this is the wrong line. You should have gone in the left line. Because the left line would have been the right line. That day I learned. I learned that just because something sounds right, <laughs> just because something feels right, don't mean it is right. Here's what I came to tell you today. I'm sorry, but some of you guys are in the right line. Um, somebody told you, make sure you go in the right line. And you go, so. And some of you are standing in the wrong line, spiritually speaking. You're standing in the line. You're waiting in the line for the overflow, for the abundance, for the blessings. You're praying. You're crying out. You're standing in the right line or the line that feels right, that smells right, that looks right, sounds right. But it's the wrong line. He said, Pastor Chris, which, <laughs> which line... Is the overflow line. Because that's the line I want to be in. You're talking about God, I give overflow, and He's a God of overflow. Which line do I go in? Make sure you're in the right line. The Pastor Chris, you have to do better than that. Look, can I tell you about the overflow line? Jesus says, or Paul in quoting Jesus says, It is more blessed 
to give than it is to receive. What a lot of people are doing, the mistake we're making, and, and it feels right, you know, and it sounds right. If you want to receive, we've been going in the receiving line all of our life because we want to receive. You want blessing? You're going to the blessing, the receiving line. But Jesus is saying, we have it wrong. It is more blessed. You will get more blessing. The overflow line is the giving line. There are two lines. There's a receiving line and then there's a giving line. There's a line that you go in to be served and there's a line you go in to serve. There's a line you go in to eat and there's another line you go in to feed. There's a line you go in for encouragement and there's a line you go in for encouraging. There's a line you go in for prayer and there is a line you go in to pray for. There's a line you go in to be mentored and a line you go in for men to mentor. There's a line you go in to receive and there's another line you're going to give. At, uh, at church, there is a receiving line and a giving line. At work, there is, I'm telling you, there is a receiving place and a giving place at work. At school, there is a receiving place and a giving place. In your marriage, there is a receiving place and there is a giving place. I want to be honest on what I'm saying. In your relationships, there is a receiving and there is a giving. Jesus is saying, you need to be in the receiving line. If you want the abundance, if you want more, if you want overflow, it's really over here. And it's so counterintuitive, counterintuitive. It's like it don't make sense. Because I might give out over there, but you want me to give in over here. And it just doesn't feel right. Don't want to be agree with me. It's even sound weird. You know, it, it, it doesn't feel good. A lot of us don't feel like we want to go in the giving line. We want to go first to the receiving line, and we want to stay in the receiving line. Can I give you four reasons why we first go into the giving line, the receiving line, and why we first, why we always stay in the receiving line? Who's ready for this? Four, four of them. I'll give you four words. You can remember it will not be on the, 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 the behind us on the screen. Number one, we go and stay in the getting line because we really, really enjoy getting. Right? We, 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 we have a craving for getting. We, we, we like getting things. We like where we have things. We get attached to things. So we go to the line where we can get things. And we're not trying to give things. I, I, I'm not just talking money. I'm talking things. I'm talking your time, your energy. The older you get is the less energy and time you want to give anything. Maybe I'll get it up there. You understand what I'm saying? My time is my most precious. So, so someone say craving. Uh, number two, saving. What we, what we feel like doing, especially the more responsible we are, we feel like what we need to do is we need to save. We need to hold on to and stay in this line. We need to hold and we need to save. And, and, and you know what? It's, it's very close to what I call slaving. Most of us have a slave mentality that says, any little I get, you know, I better hold on to it because I don't know when master going to give me anymore. So we hold on to the chicken back and nothing don't taste like that again. We hold on to the ox tail and it tastes like heaven. We hope, but that's a different sermon. The point is, slaves and those with a slave mentality hold on 
to what they have. Because they don't know, they don't have the faith enough to believe for more. Somebody say slaving. I mean saving. Number three, uh, we feel eventually that we are what we have. And we get to a place where we're defined by what we have. And the more we have, the more we feel we are. Especially when it comes to showing ourselves, showing what we have to others, we feel like they're defining us by what we have. And we are defined by what we have. And it really is, is a kind of uh, pretending. Because how many of you know you are not what you have? So a lot of people are in this line pretending. Somebody say pretending. Who are you pretending for? That's making you stay in this line. This is the getting line. Lastly, we feel like, now this one make the most sense, so just listen. We feel like we are going to wait until we are full before we give. So we're gonna, we, feel, uh, we feel like it makes more sense to stay here until we feel like we have enough to then go into that line. How many of you know, a lot of people that are waiting to be filled in the receiving line to go to the giving line never ever get to the giving line because they will never be filled in this line. You will not be filled. A lot of people are waiting, somebody say waiting. How long have you been waiting? How long have you been <laughs> How long have you been craving? How long have you been sl slaving? How long have you been pretending? How long are you going to wait? The biological clock ticking. The clock is ticking. Issues, right? Yeah. Yeah, the time is going and you're still over here waiting. Years, some of your decades, waiting to receive that thing, waiting for the favor of the Lord, waiting for the blessings of God, and you're praying over here, and you're doing all kinds of stuff. Meanwhile, God is saying, you're in the wrong line. This is the giving line, and this is the overflow line. Simple? It's pretty simple. Somebody says simple. Hard but simple. Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says this Give, and then it will be given unto you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, it will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. God does not give overflow so that you can then give. God does not give his best so that you can give to others. God gives overflow when you give to others. Can't be waiting on that. God gives you overflow when you start giving. Give, and then it will be given unto you. Then you're going to get some pressing and some shaking and some running over. When you give. I mean, he gives us that scripture and then everybody goes over here to get. You see that song we've been singing? I'm living in the overflow. It's not over here. Okay? It's, it's over here. I'm living in the overflow. All right. What Jesus is saying is, you don't get to give, you give to get. The, one time, uh, Jesus was sitting at a well. He was sitting at a receiving place. How many of you know a well is a place where you receive? He's sitting at a receiving place. He was thirsty and hungry, it says before. The narrator says, 
They were thirsty, they were hungry. He sat down at the receiving place and he starts to give to a lady. Oh, no, we don't know if him drink. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, you can read it. But he's sitting in a receiving place, but he's giving. And he gives and he gives and she runs back and she preaches and her entire, the word of God says, her entire city, based on her testimony of what Jesus just gave her, says they're coming out to him. And Jesus knows they're coming. Then his disciples come back to him and his disciples say, Jesus, you're not hungry. White squall, dig out your mouth, corner. You are, the, you are the Lord and you are the Christ. You can't have white squall and dig out your mouth, corner. You can't be hungry. The world needs you, Jesus. You can't be thirsty and hungry. Eat something. They're saying, Jesus, eat something. No, we brought food. Eat something. And Jesus said, no. I, right now, I am not trying to stand up in the receiving line. Right now, I want to be in the giving line. And he says something to them, powerful. He says, I have food that you know nothing about. In other words, I am fed by a source that you don't understand because you run to get food. You see the harvest coming and you want to eat. This is giving time. He says, it's giving time. I'm excited about giving. I'm standing in the giving line. This is where I eat. This is where I'm filled. In the giving line. So don't ask me where I'm standing. I'm standing in the overflow. You come to me with dumpling and what else? Saltfish and with some ackee and what else? I'm come with. Give me some breadfruit and oh, some curry goat, white rice, some fried pan. But Jesus says, "No, I'm I'm staying in the overflow. I'm staying in the giving line. I'm not going to eat." Because that only satisfies me temporarily. But when these people come and I pour myself out to them, give them what they need, encourage them, preach to them, that is when I'm really fed. And that is why I'm so strong and why I'm so powerful. That is why I'm living in the overflow. So if you ask me why I'm standing in the giving line, it's because I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. I'm living in the overflow. Uh, I'm living in the overflow. How many of you understand what Jesus was doing? In the overflow, there are a couple of things. Uh, let, let, let me just teach. I mean, kind of, quickly, give you another list. Somebody say peace. A peace that flows out of joy. Some of you in here, this is what you need the most. Peace. There is peace in the overflow. You will not get peace until you begin giving. Uh, uh, you will not find joy and peace when you're living for yourself. Depression, sadness, anxiety, it flourishes in stagnation. Depression flourishes in stagnation. In other words, when you have no flow, when there's nothing flowing out of you, you have no flow. And you remain stagnant and you get depressed. Depressed people, people that get depressed very often and struggle, one of the issues is that they are very inward focused. You will hear them say I and me quite a lot. And uh, most of us, when we fall into depression, it's because we've become me focused, I focused. You're, you're trying to grapple with your life. You're trying to... You cannot make sense of your life. 
You cannot work out your life. Your mind cannot deal with your life. Your mind cannot find peace, joy, if it is inwardly focused. The joy you're looking for, the joy that you want to begin flowing in your life and the peace that you need is in the overflow. You have to start giving. Your perspective when giving will shift. It will change. Joy is waiting for you in the overflow. Joy is waiting for you in this line. No matter how much you draw from the give it the get in line, you will always be pressed down. You need to get in the other line. Another one is purpose and meaning. Fulfillment inside is intrinsically connected to fulfilling something outside. The feeling that you're looking for inside yourself is tied to you fulfilling something outside. You hear what I'm saying? You're not going to fill up on the inside if you're not feeling anything on the outside. 90% more than 90% of who you are created to be is defined by what you're a part of outside of you. So if you're only a part of you and not a part of anything else, a place that you're giving to, a place that you're a part of building, something that you're serving, then you're not living in not even 10% of your purpose in life. So you wonder why, where is... Where's my purpose? Is it, is it in my passion? <laughs> is it in my possessions? Is it in my people? I mean, God is saying, no, it's, it's in the thing that you're a part of. It's in purpose. It's in giving. So if you're looking for meaning, it's in the overflow. Got that one? Next. Somebody say power. Power. Jesus was walking. And as he's walking, he's walking in a crowd. And Jesus stops the crowd and he says, Hold on, everybody stop. And everybody stop. He says, Somebody touch me. Somebody touch me. He said, I felt, I just felt something flowing out of me. He says, I, I feel power flowing out of me. Power just left me. He felt God's power flowing through him. And say, and I like it. Do you know that most persons have only felt the trickling of God and God's spirit and God's stuff flowing to them? It's just a trickle. And they've never really experienced the gushing of God's power flowing through them. There is a trickling of what can flow to you, like a small pipe. And there is a gushing that will come when you say, God, flow through me. Jesus said, I feel God's power flowing through me. How many of you want to feel God's power flowing through you? Because I know, I know you're crying out for his power to flow to you. But it's a whole other thing when you say flow through me. It will Rock your world, it will change you. The last one, and I'll just talk about this, this one. So I want to say provision. I'm here to tell you today that all that you need is in the overflow. God wants to pour out in your life, even, even in areas that, that you don't even pray about anymore. God wants to bless you in, 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 in areas that you don't even know you have need. That's waiting in the overflow. Can I tell you a story? And then we go. Uh, I'll read about it and then throw some commentary in. 2 Kings 4, verses 8. One day, Elisha the prophet went to Shunem. And a well to do woman, any well to do woman here? And a well to do woman was there. 
who urged him to stay for a meal. And so whenever he came by, he stopped there to eat. Because you can't cook. Verse 9. She said to her husband one day, you know that this man uh, who, who often comes our way, you know, he's a holy man of God. That's why I feed him and thing. Next verse. Let's make a small room on the roof and put in it a bed and a table and a chair and a lamp. Then he can stay here, there, whenever he comes to us. We shall stop there for a second. She said, I know he comes every now and then. Every now and then I do some good stuff, but what if I, what if we make room for him? What if we make room to give all the time? And of course, as a good husband, you say, you sure about that? I, sweetheart, think about this good enough. Because you're going from being a sometime-ish person to having to be an all-the-time person. And that's a whole different cost. That's a whole different price. I mean, you're talking, you know, you know what, it's, what we're going to go through? You know how much money it's going to cost to go build that something on top of the roof? I don't know how much time it's going to take to build all of that on top of the roof. Everything has to change once he moves in. Instead of cooking every now and then, you're going to have to cook for him all the time while he's here. And that's like, it's not just a one-meal thing, it's like a breakfast you're going to have to feed the man, right? And you're barely feeding me right now, he said. <laughs> you're not a, a different version. <laughs> I mean, you're barely a cook for me now, you want a man moving. And you're going to have to change up everything. You're going to have to, you, you're going to have to, you, you can't, when, when he comes, if he's going up to the roof, he's going to have to walk all through our house to go all the way up there. And then if he's leaving, he's going to have to walk all through your business. So you can't walk around in, um, you can't walk around again in, your, in what you walk around with. You're going, you're going to have to do your hair now every day. You're going to have to get your hair done, ladies. All the time because the man of God is upstairs and can't see you like that. How many of you ladies understand what I'm saying? And the husband is saying, because it costed me enough money to do your hair now every two weeks. I know you're going to tell me I have to do your hair every week or sometime too. And the hair you're buying is very expensive. And it rough on me because, I mean, sorry, hold on. Back to the word, back to the word. If you ask me what I'm wearing, So he says, are you sure you want to do this? Because the cost of being in this line is a whole lot different than the cost of setting yourself up to just be in this line every now and then. Are you sure you're ready to make room for God like this? So guess what? She did it. She set up the room. The prophet, you know, um, he's there and he's staying in the room. And um, he has a thought and he says, if she's giving this way, then I know God wants to now give to her. She's now become a giver. She's now made room. She's giving in a way that is releasing a blessing on her. So he prays and he asks around and he asks God, what does she need, God? What is it that she... You want to hear what him tell her? You guys don't know this because I didn't tell you, but she, to this point, was barren and had never had a child. And though she was well-to-do and had everything else, she didn't have a child. And the prophet looked at her and he said, about this time next year, Elisha said, this is verse 16, you will hold a son in your arms. No, my Lord, she said. She objected. Please, man of God, don't mislead me like that. Don't mess with, don't ramp with me like that. Don't play them joke there with me. Because I stopped praying that prayer a long time ago. 
I gave up a long time ago. I thought God didn't want to give me that a long time ago. I mean, for years I stood in the line to receive. And I didn't get. No ramp put me, you know. For years I stood in the line. And I cried out for a child. And I said, I'm a good servant. Here I am, Lord. And the prophet said, well, well, the difference now is, You're standing in the overflow. You made room for the overflow. You're in the giving line, sweetheart. And in the giving line, God will give you stuff that you don't even remember that you need. That you don't even know that you need. God will give you an overflow that you gave up on getting before. And he released an overflow blessing on her because she was in the giving line. Because she made room for giving. But the woman became pregnant. And the next year, about the same time, she gave birth to a son. Just as the prophet said. <sighs> you know, she didn't know. She didn't know at the time. But... The room she was building, the extra room, the room she was building for the prophet was really for another that would come to live in the house. I would say, Mommy, I want to live on the roof. Can I go on the roof? Can I live on the roof? Can I get like a house up there with like a table? Can I get a room with a table? And a I want to live up on the roof. Well, we already have that room built. She was giving, not knowing that she was giving for her blessing. Uh, what, what would happen if you decide to not just be someone who, 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 who gives every now and then just enough to get a little bit. You know what I'm talking about? What would happen if you are, if, if you're not just somebody that, that gives every now and then, but that you become the type of person that makes room, that builds a room and pays the cost, planning and money and spending, to give continually in your life. What would happen if you open your life up to that? If you decide to make room, all that you need's in the overflow. You hear what I'm saying? When you decide to make room, all that you need, more than enough, is in the overflow. You will receive things that you stopped praying about when you were over there. Because you thought it wasn't for you. Stuff you gave up on. Stuff you thought you were disqualified for. Stuff you thought you were now too old for. Stuff you thought you weren't good enough for. Stuff you thought you weren't worthy enough. Stuff you thought you just don't have enough sense to get. Stuff you thought you didn't have enough faith for. God is saying all of that and more than enough is in the overflow. She didn't even, she didn't even realize She's going to need a son. The, word, the, the scripture says that they discovered that she had a husband, but she had no son. So they had no one to give all of the well-to-do that they had to. And if, when the husband who would pass, when, when he goes away, she would have nothing. She didn't even know she really needed a son for all of that. She wasn't even thinking about all of that. And what I'm saying is that in the overflow, there are blessings that you don't even know that you're going to need in the future. I'm saying, you go over here to receive things you know you need. But you go over here to receive things God knows you need. That you don't even know you need. So you can go and think you're smart over here. Making deals with God. <laughs> but there's more than enough in the overflow. And all that you need is in the overflow. 
You decide. You decide when. You decide. Please decide today. The fact is, Jesus says, give and it will be given unto you. You decide when you make your living space a giving space. Because when you make your living space a giving space, God will make that a getting space. An overflow place. You decide when you make your living space a giving space. You are the one that needs to decide when you make your working space a giving space. When you make your churching space a giving space. When you make your schooling place a giving place. You decide. Somebody say, I'm making my living place a giving place. Say, I will make my workplace a giving place. Say, I will make my church place a giving place. If you're in school, say, I will make my school place a giving place. I will make room for overflow. I will make it an overflow place. I will make it an overflow place. You know, we are this close. You, some of you are this close to overflow. But you know, I mean, you're just this close. You're just like a, a lean, lean in to a giving. Let me hear what I'm saying. God is saying, when you make it, when you make the room, I will send the flood. He says, test me in these things and see if I'm not going to open up a floodgate upon you that you cannot handle. When you give, you decide when. And you decide how much. Mercy. Let me tell you, the word of God says you decide how much. He says, given it will be given unto you based on your measure. Somebody say, my measure, Pastor. My measure. When you give, that's when he gives. How much you give is what he gives. The word of God says this. I'm not trying to make you feel good. I'm trying to tell you it's up to you. The measure to which you give is the measure to which God will pour out over here. You hear me? What I'm saying is the word of God says he'll give it and he will press it down. He will shake it together and he will run, he'll make it run over. So when you press, God says, you make me feel like pressing. You understand? And when you give and you shake it up, he says, you make me feel like shaking. And when you make it run over in your giving, he says, you make me feel like running. John Mark still up at the top, oh Lord. John Mark, you feel like running and skipping. Don't skip down, it skips out. I'm telling you, if you give and then press it down and not give stingy, right? You press down what you're giving and you give to them and you shake it up, shake and press it again. And then you press and you shake and you press and you shake and you cause it to even run over into their life. God is saying, you make me feel like shaking. You make me feel like pressing. You make me feel like running. You guys know where I'm going? You make me feel like running. Uh, or is it wrong key? I feel like pressing, shaking, giving to the Lord. No, not that, no, 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 pull up, not that version, yeah, man? <laughs> Give me the fast one, no, just, just do it and we'll just roll with it. Jeez, they make me work, right? Okay, so it was a different key. That was my fault. Well, John Mark, come help me. God is saying, we're going to sing it, but God is saying, when you press, I feel like pressing. When you shake it down, I feel like shaking. When you cause it to run over, I feel like making it run over into your life. How many of you understand what I'm saying today? Well, let's stand up and sing about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I don't know about you, but in my giving, I feel like pressing. In my giving, I feel like shaking it. In my giving, I will determine how much blessed I am, how much blessing I receive. God says, the amount that you give is the amount I will pour out. Somebody sing. someone else's life, then God will pour out into your life. How many of you understand what I'm saying? I've given you the key to unlock it. Serving, giving to others is what will cause all of God's peace, his purpose in your life, his power, and even provision to flow into your life. How many of you feel that you're ready to give? <laughs> 